How's your quarantine, Bush? Mate, I live in WA. I haven't had to quarantine. What are you talking about? No, I'm saying, how's your quarantine, Bush? Thankfully, support for you is on the way through Manscaped.com. Manscaped are the best in the business at men's below-the-belt grooming and offer precision-engineered tools for your family jewels. Aren't they American? Yes, they are, Bush, but thankfully, they have just launched in Australia. We've been going years by using the wrong tools for our jewels, but thankfully now you can be one of the first people to actually use their premium products. Down under? There's nothing worse when you stuff up shaving your balls. Yeah, I know, and how about when you accidentally lather your balls in veet? Who does that? <laughs> not this guy. I'm not convinced. Thankfully, Manscaped has redesigned the electric trimmer and their engineers have spent 18 months perfecting the greatest ball hair trimmer that's ever been created and they're launching their new product, the Lawnmower 3.0. Lawnmower? But I got AstroTurf. <laughs> no, 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 no. We're not talking about an actual lawnmower, Bush. We're actually just talking about shaving our nuts. What if you have a particularly large surface area on your scrotum? Is there a feature that helps relieve the potential for cutting yourself. Thankfully, Manscaped has designed a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce manscaping accidents for larger bald fellows such as yourself. Ram nuts. What happens if I'm a person that takes really long showers and wanted to incorporate my ball shaving into this routine? Would the Manscaped be suitable product? First of all, that's a gross image. Second of all, thankfully for you, this is a premium battery that will last 90 minutes and it's actually also got water resistant technology. So you can do it in your shower, in a public pool, wherever you want to shave your nuts. Public pool? That sounds fun. What if I'm a bit of a cave gremlin and prefer to shave in my dark, quiet, damp sort of spot? <laughs> do you have sort of appropriate... Is there any capacity for help in that? Thankfully, one of the coolest features about this product is the LED light that is able to illuminate your nuts as you're shaving them. Also, if you're scared about waking up all those children, thankfully there is 7,000 RPM motor with quiet stroke technology, so you won't wake up a single soul. I do love a good quiet stroke in the shower. And let's not forget about the charging stand, Bush, so you can show off your mower loud and proud. I'm sure the rest of my family will appreciate that sitting on the bathroom counter for them to enjoy when they're brushing their teeth in the morning. Yes, well, that aside, it is an intelligent intelligently designed charging stand that is powered by USB. If you are listening to us right now, I want you to experience it firsthand for yourselves. Trim that junk of yours, and if you go to manscaped.com via the link in the description or just go into manscaped.com, you can get 20% off your purchase and free shipping using the code TRUEFOOTY, all one word, all caps. Yeah, bloody balls, well thank you. So remember guys, Go to manscaped.com, use the code TRUEFOOTY, all one word, all caps, and you will get 20% off these premium products. Crikey! It's time to shave those balls. Say goodbye to that bush. Where am I going? No, 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 like a, a pubic bush. Say goodbye to the bush. What? Where am I going? No, no, no. No, I'm talking about shaving your pubes. What pubes? All right, welcome back to True Footy Podcast. I think it is 57. I had 57 in my notes, but I was very, like, put a question mark next to it, like, is this 57? He's done a few with some guests and stuff. I've lost track. True. Yeah, I literally lost track as well. The last one we did was with Druzy. Yeah. Uh, then there was a smattering of ones with guests on Skype, like you say. This is the first one we've done just us since the start of the season. Yeah, it's been pretty interesting season so far, I'd say. Definitely, it has. Well, um, society in general, more so than specifically <laughs> the season, but... Yeah, some shit's happened since you and I last saw each other. Oh, no, that's, that's not true. <laughs> that's, that's a blatant well, lie. So we were on a stream last night, mate. Yeah, I mean, the, the pure old like OG pods where it's just yeah. you and me. In um, the crack den here. Yeah, the, the last one we did was doing our ladder prediction for the start of 2020, before the shortened season, all that shit. Um, so a lot's happened, but um, how you going, Bush? Yeah, I'm going pretty okay, like, everything that's going on sort of making me a bit confused, but sort of working my way through it all, I guess. How about yourself? Yeah, yeah, pretty much the same. Um, trying to uh, trying to make content in this weird AFL scene at the moment is um, is different, but uh, we've had a bit going on in the channel regardless, like we had Druzy on. Um, we've had actually a lot to do with Druzy in such a hey. short period of time. What have you made of young Druzy? I'm loving his work. Good young kid, like, real happy out there going good kid yeah he is. even wanted us to get out on the town with him last night but <laughs> yeah we did have other caught me when i was a bit hungover yeah that's right now nah, he's uh he's a very good bloke hey i, I think shelf. like watching his his stuff before i met him um i think i knew that i was gonna like him but it's always a bit different like yeah. it's always a bit nervy when you when you first meet someone um and i've been sort of burning myself saying i'm the 26 year old hanging out with a 19 year old making <laughs> content but to be fair he's actually got a pretty good head yeah. on his shoulders doesn't he yeah like even during the podcast that we had with him some of his like perspectives and insight for a 19 year old i was like 
I wasn't thinking that way. I'm yeah. Nearly, I'm turning 25 in less than a month, and I'm still not thinking that way in some aspects. <laughs> yeah, true. I think I think he thinks more like a 22 year old, and I think more like a 22 year old than a 26 year old. So we meet in the middle, and we're yeah. a good mix. So go check out his channel if you haven't already. Um, but he's been on the live stream. I'm sure people who watch this are very familiar with who he is, especially if you watch two podcasts. Oh no, it was the very last podcast we did. So um, yeah, all very good stuff as well. Um, we kind of got a little half sponsor go- going yep. at the moment, which we, um, which people who have watched this would have just watched the prelude, which would be our sponsorship message. But um, that's a little bit exciting, Bush. We got a little trial month where we Absolutely. basically have to get eight sales. We've already got one at least. For oh, I think we've got quite a few now. Yeah. We, we probably Well, not quite a few. We're probably about halfway there. We just yeah. need a little bit more help. But um, as you would have seen in the video, guys, if you want Manscaped products. Yeah. I've got to say we've done pretty well so far, considering we haven't even got the merge to wear and properly yeah. promote it with. We've already had a few sales. so We were hoping to have all that by now, but it's coming from America, like the T-shirt and stuff. Yeah. We're actually getting sent the cof- uh, the products as well. We we're going to showcase them. Busher was going to shave live on the stream. Absolutely. Um, but unfortunately, it's come from America, so it's going to take a little while to get here. But um, we thought, why wait to promote the product? Um, it, I've actually, I actually know people who use the product. Yeah. yeah, I was speaking to someone last night. I actually can't remember who. Maybe someone from work. And um, yeah, they really rate it. So yeah. that's pretty cool. I was spewing because I had a friend of mine who was in the market for one, but literally a few, two, three weeks before we found this news out, he purchased one. But mm. I've purchased that brand that he's purchased before. So knowing his luck, he might be using our code after all. Yeah, true. Oh, fair enough. There's a little little yeah. dig. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. Because I bought a shaver from the same brand and it was a piece of shit. Yeah, right. Okay, fair enough. We're not That's talking about Manscaped, mate. just to clarify. <laughs> yeah, talk- definitely not Manscaped. You're talking about an com- unnamed competitor. Wow. <laughs> I'll name them. Oh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, nice one. Um, <laughs> yeah, Bush, we had a really successful live stream last night, didn't we? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, uh, the time we recorded I came this- in late and it was popping off when yeah. I showed up. Yeah, and, and the stream? Also. <laughs> also pop it off. <laughs> We uh, so Joycey regained, rejoined the channel for yeah. one night last night. That was really good fun. The Eagles played Geelong, absolute ripper of a game, cracking game for sure. But I think the true headline was a guy in the uh, in the stream called Max Fairclough. Fairclough, I want to say, how would you pronounce it? Chloe, maybe Fairclough, maybe. Yeah, Chloe, yeah it's yeah. Fairclough, Fairclough. I would Chloe, say Fairclough actually. Yeah. Now you said it, I like that. Um, dropped a fat what two hundred and thirty bucks in the chat as a as a he was um, making it rain as a donation to the channel. Which is really, really great. No, it's, it was wild, actually. We almost yeah. feel embarrassed to, to receive donations like that. But um, it was really, really nice of him. We've had really yeah. good support from the community over the last period. But as well, he, um, he, he's kind of inspired me because today, or, or like last night when he, he dropped the final 50 bucks or 100 bucks or whatever yeah. it was, he mentioned Beyond Blue and he had kind of like an inspiring message about mental health and how you should reach out to people um, when you're feeling blue. Yeah. Um, for lack of a better word. Um, so that's kind of inspired me, Bush. Why don't we do something we've never done on the pod before? Why don't you talk... A, why don't we do a little are you okay? A little check-in. How are you going, particularly in this little period um, of COVID-19? Like, do you have any anxieties or how's life going for you? I, I deluded to it a little, like, confused and sort of... Mm. I have been a bit, quite more anxious probably the past six months than I have probably ever been in my life. Not specifically corona-related, maybe stuff going on in my own life figuring out what i want to do a lot of those doubts and and even with maxon's donating like seeing the fact that he's willing to donate that money and the channel has that sort of impact on him made me Mm. think like the impact of people that aren't even donating like there's the people that get around it in the chats when we do the streams the commenters that always comment the discord like Mm. the fact that we can impact people's life and that sort of of relieved some of that anxiety for me make him go if i can impact yeah it's sort of like made me feel a bit better like Oh, that's cool. Stuff, yeah. That's cool. That's a thought I've had as well before. Um, I have had one or two people message me saying, you know, this pod's got me through a tough time and I'm not arrogant enough to think that we are really doing anything special here. We're just a couple of handsome dudes talking shit about footy, aren't we? Um, but I mean, I mean, maybe it's something you can relate to. Have but, you ever had uh, a- I don't know. It's more also coming from the perspective, people supporting us has helped me rather than sure. us putting out content to yeah. help people. It's the people that support us has helped me sort of figure that's out nice. some of my doubts and stuff that's at nice. the moment. Yeah. I'm really grateful to all those people as well. Definitely, this is kind yeah. of like a, a validation, isn't it, that what we're doing isn't a waste of time. We're, n- we're not talking about the money, obviously. Yeah. It's, it's the people who, yeah, who that's, appreciate it. That's what I'm saying. Because even beyond like, the fact that you don't have 200 bucks, is the, his message is beyond blue. Yeah. It's mental health. Money doesn't matter. Like, it's the yeah. fact there's a community there. There's people there that are supporting each other. It's positive. It's True. Good. Yeah, there are definitely some good people out there. So yeah. It's kind of like, it's quite inspiring. Um, 
But also as well, have you ever had a show like that's helped you through a tough time? Like I yeah. certainly have. When I was like a teenager, I used to just binge watch The Office, for example, uh, um, which is just you know a comedy sitcom, um, and that helped me through a tough time. And I, one thing I aspire to with True Footy is. Uh, amongst other things, is being some sort of escape for people. So we're a bit silly here, um, even though, I mean, in this podcast, we've literally just gone from dick and ball jokes at the start to now talking about... Sponsored dick and ball jokes. Yeah, sponsored dick and jo- uh, ball jokes. And, you know, our comedy is lowbrow and stuff like that. But um, but I don't know, like, one thing I aspire to be is maybe an escape for people in a very unqualified way. Um, if that show can become, or well, this show can become something like that for people, that that's pretty, you know... That's pretty inspiring for me. Like, I, that's something I'm aspire to. So. Definitely. Yeah. But I mean, for myself, um, just to sort of pull back the curtain a little bit, um, I've kind of alluded to it a bit on the channel a, li- a bit, like, and people can probably put two and two together. But just coming out of a four year relationship, um, probably about six weeks ago, moving into a new house. So, yeah, like, I, I'm anxious quite a lot and, yeah. you know, spend a lot, of day, a lot of the day sad and anxious, and I'm not ashamed to say that. Um, and I think that's very common. Um, especially like you know a four-year relationship is a long time so um yeah like all that sort of stuff when you're very comfortable in a relationship for like four years yeah so to come out of that has been kind of confronting but i've I've had good people around me like you know from sorry to cut you off because it's a point but from what i've seen you've sort of handled it really well like you've sort of seen it as an opportunity to try to like expand your eyes on something new like Mm. just sort of like you've sort of taken that as an opportunity rather than like a woe is me sort of thing you've sort of taken it by the horns i think and oh thanks yeah i mean i i like i'm lucky that um you know dylan is looking for a new place at the same time so i just sort of leapt on that because i thought it's a really good opportunity to start a new creative project so we'll plug cool world yeah i was gonna try and slip her in at some stage (laughs) yeah also a cool world reference yeah exactly um so, so yeah, something like that and just sort of even just rekindling my friendship with him because I, I yeah. haven't seen him in years really. Because he, pretty much when all this happened, he was lucky enough to be up in Geraldton where before like, because Perth was more locked down than Geraldton was I believe when everything first happened. So he yeah, was true. happy to be up there with his family, enjoy the good weather, it's a bit hotter up there. Yeah, up yeah, that's true. Um, and Dylan's probably yeah. someone people will see more of now that he's living with uh, one of the guys from yeah. True Footy. So yeah. Um, yeah, no, I think like it's, it's been one we to... probably would have gotten on the channel before if the stars had aligned. It just hadn't happened, yeah, sort of thing. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Um, but there'll be plenty of that in the future. Um, but yeah, I guess the advice, I well, not advice. I'm not qualified to give advice, but it's just I've been lucky that I've sort of surrounded myself with good people. Um, you know, meeting Drewsy, moving yeah. with Dylan, having you and Joycey over for streams and stuff like that. Um, it's all about being positive, and I think one thing that people maybe misconstrue about being positive it's it's not about being like fuck yeah my life is shit let this yeah. is such an opportunity it's not about being happy yeah. when you sh- when things are shit it's just about being proactive to yeah. take steps so that you have an exit strategy for when you know you're ready to start feeling good again um and you know eventually i'll start feeling good again yeah. about true footy at the moment i'm not going to like this is the least motivated i've ever been for true yeah. footy just because i've, I've yeah. got the shit going i'm on. sort of in a similar spot because you know, i had my where i tried teaching didn't hate yep. it like all the circumstances didn't fall on i might have liked it if circumstances were better but still it wasn't for me like i'm sort of getting to the other side of dealing with that sort of failure like mm. sort of starting to see those positives and sort yep. of strategize rather than just sort of sitting around here lamenting mm. the fact i'd wasted six months and sort yeah. of an extent the year prior figuring out what i want to do yeah fair enough yeah no that's all very interesting and like i guess you've got this creative project that you can kind of focus your energy yeah. into as well with true footy so um yeah oh, fair enough something i want to get more into sort of like it's not like i have video ideas but i don't necessarily know how to execute them like yeah uh, so it's like once that clicks maybe i might be able to produce more and that might give me something but I'm yeah. still figuring it out, I think. Well, I can always help you with yeah. that because you don't actually come to me with these ideas yeah. that much. Um, that's part of my thing as well. I'm a bit introverted in that yeah. sense. It's like, well, I'm even with me? Everyone, I'm a bit like that with everyone. Like, even mum, dad, buddy, anyone, I'm like, I'm like, like yeah, it's a bit. Mm. Yeah. I'm a very introverted person as well. Which... Like, I enjoy engaging with people and stuff, but like, ultimately, I'm happy in my own company and I yeah. think people, like, I have the assumption people are the same, so I don't want to pass through them, sort of thing. That's sort yeah. of like the mentality behind it, I guess. That's interesting. Yeah. Man, like, well, anytime you come up with an idea for videos, you yeah. know, I'm, I'm never going to say no. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. But, uh, um, it's more like how, because the one I've sort of got at the moment, we'll probably touch on it once we actually start talking footy, so I'll probably elaborate on it a bit then, I guess, but mm. it's the closest I've sort of had to a video idea if it isn't me just ranting and raving about how much <laughs> Ross Lyon annoyed me. <laughs> yeah, you do have an unuploaded video about Ross Lyon. <laughs> <that, laughs> 
hopefully we'll see the light of day one day but uh <laughs> if yeah. i could find that footage <laughs> <laughs> that's quality um yeah cool so to yeah. sum up um oh, also i want to put a little message out there as well yeah. people um who want to talk um feel free to like inbox us on yeah. you know true footy official on instagram or whatever um when I did, I did it a fairly emotionally candid video like a month yeah. or two ago talking about my mum who passed away and the amount of people who messaged me and who had similar stories and frankly far more tragic stories than what I've been through was quite overwhelming and that sort of, that sort of thing really gives me perspective about I've got it very good. But the point I'm trying to make is I liked hearing from people so I just yeah. want to put that out there. If anyone wants to talk, True Footy... Um, has open arms. Yeah. Like I said, like I just said it two seconds ago, I'm introverted, but at the same time, if people reach out and want to talk, I'm always up for like, once someone's expressed that they want like to talk or yeah. whatever, I'm always up for it, even True. though I'm not necessarily the one to initiate it sort of thing. Yeah, okay. If that sort of makes sense. Nah, that's cool. That's cool. Well, that's good. I think I think we've covered it. Yeah. If there's any, anything else you want to say. Um, that was surprisingly candid. Uh, yeah. We're doing a little bit of that on True Footy. Um, yeah. I guess we can sort of do a little semi-deviation into COVID-19 and this wacky world and football. Yep. How have you perceived this season so far as a fan? What's your been experience been like? Does it feel like a real season to you? Well, this is actually what I was just alluding to, that video idea. Like, Because I've sort of seen a lot of people, like I hear my old boys say a bit like, this isn't real season, this doesn't count, like, uh, this isn't real. Like, But for me, it still counts, it's still a real season. Like, but maybe at the same time, it doesn't take the same attributes to win the premiership this year than it take to win it normal years. Like normal years, it's like your planning, your strategy, and all that sort of stuff. This year, it's more like your heart, your like your players putting it in mm. there. More like players having to carry shit off their backs rather than having informed strategies and like being flexible, all that sort of stuff. There's other qualities that are going to take True. to win a flag this year, a different and those kind of qualities resilience. still should be respected and appreciated. I feel. True, yeah. I guess the the only question is when, when it's unfair between teams. So, obviously, at the moment, you've got this issue with Brisbane not really leaving their state, and it's not yeah. their fault. But And they're playing away games at Metricon, so not travelling all year is an advantage, and I'm not saying yeah. the AFL needs to do it differently. Realistically, fairness is one of the factors that's going to be... one of, like That's a big factor in normal years, but it's like mm. can't be replicated this year, so you have to deal with the circumstances you dealt with. It's going to be the teams that have that resilience and those qualities to deal with for this year and those should be appreciated I feel well fairness actually now I think about it is really not a high priority on the AFL's list is it when you think about our normal season there's not very much that's fair about it uh-huh. the fixtures uneven yeah in theory you could say this year's fixtures the fairest because everyone's yeah. only playing each other once yeah assuming the ground issues weren't an issue yeah I was going to say the, happened, the, but the home and away thing is the, yeah. the pertin- pertinent issue yeah. there for sure um but I mean yeah I mean no no year is fair why is the grand final well I understand why the grand final is at the MCG but that's never fair. There's, yeah. there's been five or six examples in the last decade where it's probably changed the result of the Premier. Um, so, yeah, anyway. But, I mean, like, as a fan, how have you... Do you feel as invested as any other year or has it been for you? I, I sort of... I've, I think part of my thing is I was coming into the year not invested. True. That was part of the problem. Like, before I Corona, I was that. sort of like... I knew this year was going to be a wait-and-see year with, in terms of Fremantle because that's mainly... My main draw is my Freo support. And yeah. this year was sort of like a see how J-Lo goes with the kids. There's going to be some games where the kids do good stuff, but I wasn't optimistic for any results on the park. And combining that with the fact your mob were probably the favourites coming into the season <laughs> probably shook my resolve a bit. I can... Fa- oh, that's fair. Yeah, even yeah. even when my team are the premiership favourites, I actually find that harder to get excited for. I think the Eagles yeah. struggle with being the absolute favourite, as we've seen. But, yeah, for me, like going into this year, I was probably more... Desperate for footy to go ahead for a, from a true footy perspective. Because yeah. I was like, I can't sit out that you're not making videos. Um, and I feel a bit yeah. differently now. I just feel... I'm, I will get back to that. But yeah, there was this... That time I was just like, I couldn't cope with no footy. And it wasn't because no Eagles. It was because I yeah. wanted true footy to go ahead. Um, and then obviously the Eagles had that shocking start. And I'm, we're talking really yeah. bad where we thought, oh, bottom four, here we yeah. come. Yeah, crazy how that... Turned in about yeah. a t- month and a half, two months, you've gone from bottom four to the flag favourites. Yeah, I don't. I think we sit somewhere, not maybe not in between, but closer uh, to the top. For sure. Definitely closer to the top, but I don't. Yeah. I don't buy the premiership favouritism yeah. talk. I'd yet. probably still probably just give it to Brizzy over West Coast, maybe. Yeah, because assuming sounds like Grandy at this stage is going to be Gabba, but there's mm. nothing too set in stone. I don't think. Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, it's still pretty yeah. up in the air. All that 
everything. But the way the finals are going to play out still up in the air, so it's uh, probably a bit... Yeah, that's true. That's probably what gives you maybe why people are giving West Coast the edge rather than Brisbane because the finals and how that's going to play out is more of a mystery and Eagles are probably a more hardened, campaigned team compared to the Brisbane. Yeah, I suppose they did go out in straight sets last year, but we are looking at a potential grand final in Queensland. So yeah. uh, entire final series in Queensland, I reckon, is entirely possible. Very, very possible. Um, we'll talk about a little bit more coming up. We've got some questions, and that's, that's another thing we're doing today, Discord questions, which yep. we haven't touched on for, like, well... All year, yeah. actually. Yeah, so um, we really appreciate our Discord community. Uh, before we get to those, I just want to ask as well, has there anything that's really surprised you about this year? Um, and there's surprises every year. And it Port could be teams. probably has been a bit surprised. Like Port, yep. they've been... I knew they were a solid team, but I didn't think they'd be world-beating like top two or three or wherever they're mm. at at the moment. Yeah, Bloody True. killing it. I knew... I saw in the pre-season, like, I was pretty optimistic with them, like with that betting with Bush where I tipped Charlie Dixon. He was looking the best I've ever seen him. A lot of those other guys look good. Mm. Like Xavier, Dersma, Butters, those three. Yeah. Like, yeah, I was... Wasn't as optimistic as what they've done, but... Yeah. Well, it is still... It's quite surprising. still fairly early days. Um, they have passed pretty much every test other than... Okay, so they lost at home to St Kilda. Put that down to a yeah. bad day. St Kilda also kicked really well. Yeah, everyone has days like that. Exactly. You can't um, shit on them for that. They lost to Brisbane away, which is no shame in that. Brisbane are a good team at home. Um, so they haven't really done too much wrong. It's When you look at Port Adelaide's list, other than having a really good spread of like experience and youth and the, the youth they've got is outstanding, there's no real like top liners in there that you think oh, he's one of the best players in the competition, that most premiership contenders have those. For Brizzy? At uh, Port. Oh, Port, Port, yeah, Port. Port. Yeah, so okay. you're looking at like Charlie Dixon having a great season. Yeah. Uh, Boke's having a great season. But those are probably the two standouts off the top of my head. Yeah, They're more like playing like a unit, aren't yeah. they? Like, they're playing great football. Yeah. But yeah, it's just weird. And that's maybe not the best metric to decide who's a premiership contender. And yeah. I think about when the Bulldogs won in the 16, who was their best player? He had, it was like pick. Bontempelli might have won the best and fairest, but that was really before he became a truly yeah. elite player. So He was scratching the surface. He had 16. a lot of very good players in that team. And maybe Port's going to replicate that. I don't know. Um, we'll talk about that in a bit. I guess player-wise, I want to highlight a few that have surprised me. We'll go with the obvious, Raul and Rankin. Mm. Did not expect Rankin... I didn't expect Raul to come off straight away and get like multiple three Brownlow vote potentially. I've seen Brownlow predictors that still have him second. Wow, that's heinous. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. Like Lockie Neal leading by a country mile then it's like yeah. Raul. Actually, sorry, it was Raul third, but Max right. Gorn was second with like 10 Max votes. Max Gorn was second. See, yeah. Rucks never get close. Uh, well, they, they they get close, but I mean, we had Gorn and Grundy in the form of uh, just about any Ruckman ever. Yeah. Um, yeah and, and Angus Brayshaw stole Gorn's votes in that mm. 2018 year. Petrarca will probably steal him all this year. Yeah, Petrarca's doing well. Well, that's another player that's a surprise for me. Petrarca yeah. really taking that next step. Uh, it's one, I did say he was going to have a breakout year, but it's always a bit of a surprise. Another oh. player I had was Jack Martin. Yeah, I played down how impactful he would be at a new club in Carlton straight away, but it's, I think yeah. he's been really, really, really good. And then on the negative side, you got to say Ben Brown dropped. Yeah. Um, well, him, his form and then subsequently being dropped with Polek. Yeah. The team's form's probably conducive to him being poor at the moment, though, as much as anything. And then he goes out and they annihilate Adelaide by 12 goals or something. So That's Adelaide, though. Adelaide, yeah. like, just a tear of shit below everyone That's else. probably a surprise for me. I did have them bottom two, but they are yeah. that much worse than the next worst side. Yeah, I didn't think it'd be this bad for him. What did you think about... Who was it that said the Ben Brown should be traded? Who said that? There was a pundit recently. We talked about it in the group chat. Ooh. Talking about potentially trading Ben Brown. I think that's the dumbest thing. Oh, yeah, that's do. right. I tramped in and said, I'll give him Tabiner in a second yeah. round pick or something. <laughs> yeah. you, can't, you can't trade one of your only elite players. He's out of form, sure. But yeah. I hate this talk. And we had it, Embley said it about tra- free yeah. man of trading five. You have this talk about trading yeah. stars in their prime. Especially when they want to be there as well. Yeah, I just yeah. I think there's so many downsides to that. But, yeah. What about a club like St. Kilda? Uh, currently sit third on the ladder. What have you made of them? Are you, are you, have you transitioned from thinking maybe like I have that they've gone from being a side that's playing a little bit out of their skin, had some easy fixtures to doing well, um, to okay, we're halfway through the season, they're third, and they probably should be eight and one. 
What have you made of St Kilda? I've been pretty impressed with the way they've gone about it. Like, Despite the fact Brad Hill's been underwhelming for them from most mm. accounts, people think he's been very underwhelming considering mm. him being the big name recruit. But a lot of their other recruits perform really well. Dan Butler in particular has probably yep. almost been recruited the off-season, I'd say. True. Close um, to it. Yeah. And then, so. yeah, they've still... Like, Ratton's sort of got him running well. Like A lot of the guys that have been there for a while are sort of starting to consistently do stuff they've shown in individual weeks they're starting to be able to consistently level that output true they they were a side that's kind of underachieved particularly under Richardson or at least that was the perception held by some including myself I thought maybe the last couple of years of Richardson really didn't get much out of a team that was on I remember St Kilda and Melbourne were the two sides that were going to sort of on a level pegging like who's going to take the next step Melbourne obviously did and then came back down St Kilda just kind of stagnated up until this point um, another one is Paddy Ryder. Yeah. We, we, was, He's been a bit in and out of the team. Though, you're right. Him. Against Port, though, he and Marshall actually worked really well together. I, I can see the two of them working well together long term. They just mm. need to figure out the kinks of it a bit more. They're still struggling with that. But once they figure it out, I think those two will be a very potent duo. Yeah. Because they both can do shit forward if you need them to. That's true. Yeah. So if they work that out, that's probably the best one-two punch in the league right now yeah. in terms of rucks. Um, what else have we got here? Um the, sorry, I put that the, the speed in their skill has really like yeah. added a different dimension to them this year. And like you touched on, Ratten, I think it's not about the recruits as such. It's about Ratten's got the existing players sort of playing to a higher standard. Yeah. What do you think? Do you think this kind of vindicates Ratten as being really stiff to being sacked by Carlton? Because his record wasn't that bad at Carlton. And then Carlton then had that Malthouse abomination and then obviously Bolton after that. So things have really gone to shit there. Do you think this kind of vindicates him a little bit? Probably, yeah, certainly. Like, I don't know if necessarily he would have been able to succeed at Carlton, mm. but in saying that, it's sort of like you knew the guy was an AFL quality head coach, so yeah. the fact he's gotten an opportunity to show that again. Yeah, I guess also what I mean is like... There's a lot of other factors. Like, There's guys who are good coaches, but then the circumstances are just not right for well, him. Yeah, I think you can make the case that Carlton never had a premiership quality list under him and they never finished higher than fifth. Um, but... I always had this sort of perception that he was actually a pretty good coach and now he's... Yeah. It's not often that a recycled coach gets another gig as well when they've yeah. been sacked, particularly so long ago. Um, he's been paying his dues as an assistant since then. Like, yeah, I guess yeah. he got a little bit lucky that they turfed um, Richardson early. Yeah. So he he was caretaker and then he, they did a ride. He also him. did a bit of assisting at Hawks before he went to Saints, yeah. was it? Yeah, yeah. He, was, he was under Clarkson at one point. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I, uh, this he's looking pretty good right now, turning yeah. over a list that was not val- not rated that highly to to third so far. Um, I think they'll probably play finals, but yeah. Um, the other thing that's really doesn't get well. Actually, it's, it's been talked about a little bit. But this is an underrated factor in their success this year. Their accuracy at goal, accuracy at goals. Were you saying this was like one of the more yeah, they, historic? The seven or eight ah uh, seven or eight weeks they've been the most accurate shot on goal in history or something ridiculous. I think yeah, I saw that somewhere. So I don't have what they scored against Sydney. I didn't actually look, but um, against Port they kicked thirteen one, yeah. and Port had the same amount of scoring shots and kicked six eight, and they kicked they won by five goals. Then they had twelve six the week before 11-7, 11-7, 15-3. 5-7, and then 14-4. Uh, that goes back to round two. And then in round one, they had they were 7-14 and shouldn't have lost that game. Um, and that's that's the thing as well. That the two games out of three they've lost, they lost to Collingwood significantly. We'll scratch that. That's Collingwood. That's Collingwood. They lost to North and Fremantle, two bottom four sides, after holding 30-plus point leads in shortened quarters. So they should really be 8-1. Uh, so they really aren't doing too much wrong. This is probably other the best. shit in a couple of leads, but other than that. Yeah. And now that'll burn them, but that that does happen every yeah. year. So yeah, it's forgivable for them where they where they're at. It's forgivable. Yeah, if like a West Coast, well, West Coast have done that, but like mm. if a West Coast, a real top contender team did that, they'd be getting dragged through yeah. the mud. By An the experienced, pundits. hardened team yeah. dropping leads like that. Yeah, that is yeah. different. St Kilda at least have that sort of youthful excuse. Yeah. Um, we'll get into some questions now. Finally. Dom wants to know, where do we sit on Clarko and the Hawks with the team as a whole and list-wise? So, obviously, the pressure's ramping up on Clarkson, as it does every time, any time any team performs poorly. Um, But, obviously, Clarkson's a bit of a target when Hawthorne drop off because he's so successful. When Dom wrote this question, I'm pretty sure this was right after Hawthorne's loss to Sydney and they'd been playing really shit. Obviously, bounced back with a loss to Carlton. What do you make of Clarkson and the Hawks? And, I guess, 
their controversial list strategy where they've just traded in heaps and they've got one of the oldest sides in history. It's interesting to see Clarkson now that he's not coaching a winner. That's one mm. thing I'll get off my chest. He seems to be a bit more of a sore loser than you would have anticipated, True. I think. True, he's very bit outspoken. Of a yeah, a bit of a whinger. Mm. But yeah, on the whole, I'm, I don't necessarily hate their list at the moment. That's the thing. They've still got some very good players there. They, they're keeping their picks net like the luck. Now, they haven't traded their picks, so they'll probably start keeping them and using yeah. them now. Well, they used the first rounder in Will yeah, Day exactly. last year. Um, and then, but I mean, like, James Warple was pick 45. Yeah, exactly. So they don't, they don't even, and he won their best and fairest in the second yeah. year. So they, they've proven they don't need the high picks. Mitch Lewis is highly yeah. rated, pick 88. Yeah. Um, they do rely a lot on their experience. That's yeah. the thing as well. There are They do have probably about 10 players over 29 off the top of my head. Um, that are good players. But then they've also traded in a pretty good young nucleus. You've got Tom Mitchell, they traded in. Uh, Jago Ramirez traded in. Uh, Chad Wingard's traded in. They're all 26 and 25. Yeah. Issue, Tom- issue is probably replacing like your Gunstons, your Smiths, your yeah. Bruce, those sort of dudes at this point. Yeah, true. Um, I can't remember how old Gunston is, but yeah. he's at least late 20s. They're those all- guys will be big losses, Gunston yeah. and Bruce, because they are, su- are such a dynamic sort of duo for their forward line. That's yeah. Any team would really hurt losing those players. Um but I mean, what do you make of the strategy? Like, do you think, do you think they've overdone the trading? Do you think they've overlooked the draft too it, much? You can't knock it. They've won three flags in this decade, so even if they have a bit of that fall off time before they bounce back, that's to be expected. Well, like, you can't to. knock their strategy. If they're stuck in a hole for the next 10, 15 years, then by all means, shit on the strategy. But mm. they've cashed in a lot of success. They're on a bit of a downswing. You got to wear it for a bit as you get back up there. So yeah, I think like the whole. They're obviously trying to avoid falling out of the finals. Like that, uh-huh. they're, they're clearly big on trying to remain the big club. But, I mean, you look at other clubs, not any other club I can think of has Jay Gromira begging to come there, Tom Scully begging to come there, uh, Tom Mitchell begging to come there, and then Chad Wingard demands a trade to Hawthorne. They're attracting players just based on the fact that they're Hawthorne. Uh-huh. I mean, most clubs wouldn't turn down any of those players uh-huh. when you think about it. Well, they're probably one of the richer Melbourne clubs as well, so they'd have the resources for these guys in the footy capital of Australia, realistically, mm. to get them probably endorsements and other yeah. stuff beyond football. I suppose. But I think even just the attraction of being Hawthorne, we're going to win a flag soon. <laughs> Do you uh, know what I mean? Like, if you're a, if you're a fringe Victorian... Or not even fringe. Let's say you're a young... Chad Wingard's not even Victorian. That's, he's South yeah, Australian. Exactly right. Uh, so he's gone to play for the most uh, successful club in the heart of Australian football. Yeah. Uh, like, yeah, they, they've got that advantage over a team. So I, I guess what I'm saying is it makes sense that they're going for these players because these players want to play for them. If the yeah. Eagles had those Tom Mitchell, Jay Gromira, Chad Wingard yeah. in three years in a row or say, I want to play for you, they'd probably make it happen. Yeah. So, yeah. West Coast could be in a position to make that happen if they weren't based in Perth, probably. If they were a Melbourne-based team, West Coast would probably be able to... Yeah, but the funny thing that. is two of those players were West Australian yeah, and good one point. of them yeah. <laughs> South Australian. Yeah, good but, point. Um, yeah, they didn't want to come home. Canelio is another example. But, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, okay, so we'll roll into... Uh, Dom wants to know, what are your top eight teams going for the flag? So we won't deep dive yeah. this too right. much, but let's let's rattle off the locks. All right, you, no, you go first. You go I'll first. say I'll, I'll, I can go up from eight to one or one to eight. Any... Let's start from the top. All right. I've, I sort of alluded to a bit. I've sort of got West Coast just as one slightly because the fact we don't know what's going to happen in finals, they're okay. more hardened experience list. Yeah. I got Brizzy at two because of the Queensland factor. They've still got a good list. They were good last year. Sure. They haven't dropped off. Three, the Pies. Yep. They've still the Pies, even though they have have a bad game every now and again. They're on sitting outside the eight as we speak. Mind you, played one this game. Yeah. And yeah, go on. the thing is with them, like even the 2018 when they made the grand final, they had one or two bad games that year. They, they're good for a few bad games a year, so it's sort of like they've had a couple of them, so you can't mm. knock them for it as badly. Mm-hmm. Four, I got Richmond because it's Richmond. They can reigning d- premiers. Yeah, exactly. I've gone five Geelong. They've still got some big names to come back in health wise. They've still got enough talent to hold down the fort. That game last night could have gone either way. Mm-hmm. Six, I got Port based on how well they've looked so far. They've got a pretty talented list as well. Like they've got the talent to do what they got to do. Yep. I've gone seven Bombers because they've just been like in amongst it. Yeah, yep. I've sort of given them that, and then eight the Saints. Cool. All right. Yeah. I like that. Um, I didn't really put mine in a strict order, but I will yep. name my my premiership favourite at the end. Yep. Um, Richmond, Collingwood, West Coast, Geelong. Just to be boring, those are the four yep. I think will play finals this year. Um, 
Brisbane as well. Yep. Actually as good as any of those teams. So that's five locks I've got so far. I'm pretty much ready to lock in Port at seven and two. Yep. Um, whether or not they're the next best side, I'm just thinking who's going to be the eight. Um, and I'm starting to think St. Kilda now as well. Mm. So that's seven clubs, I reckon, are very, very close to locking in finals. If St. Kilda drop and don't make finals from here, that's a massive failure. But we have seen crazier things happen. Yeah. Um, and then, so I've got seven teams here. That leaves one spot for the rest of these teams. And a lot of these teams, you can make a strong case for being good enough to play finals. Mm. GWS, yeah, the, the reigning grand finalists, the reigning runner up, are currently, what, 11th or something? I, don't, yeah. I haven't looked. Surely they click into gear at some point. They do have a Perth hub coming up, but you have to think, surely, surely, yeah. <laughs> you're not going to miss finals. They're too good to miss finals. Then Essendon, yeah. that I've mentioned, ninth, and they're they're a good team, but the, some of the football they've put dogs out Dogs even, maybe. Yeah, the dogs were yeah. the next side. So two, two sides that are completely bipolar, the same issue we had last year with them. Essendon were 30 against Brisbane. I know they're yeah. playing... Well, actually, it wasn't... It was a neutral venue. Yeah. And it was in Queensland, I know that, but oh, just some of the football lessons yeah. turn up. Like, yes, you beat Collingwood, but you can't keep riding on that yeah. to get people's respect. If you're getting pumped by one of the bigger margins this year, 63 points is one of the biggest margins. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. Not impressed with that. And the Bulldogs are another, like, they're currently seventh. Very good chance to make the finals, but I've got them tenth. So I just, I, yeah. there is a squeeze happening right now. Yeah. There's going to be some unlucky teams that miss one or the other. And then you've probably got Carlton Hawthorne on Gold Coast of the next three that have that chance yeah. to bob up. And Melbourne, I've lost respect for after their, their port showing. So they're probably yeah. with those sides as well. Um, yeah. Uh, the next question is from Dylan, 25. Where will the Eagles finish this year? So you have them ranked first. What, do you think they'll finish top? Uh, probably finish second, third on the ladder sort of thing. Yeah. I yeah. think Brisbane probably end up minor premiers the way yeah. it looks like the Corona's going to make the fixture play out in the regular season at least. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah. I totally agree. I think I think Brisbane will probably win the minor premiership. Yep. I think West Coast will make the top four, but it'll probably third or fourth. Yeah. Uh, we have another Queensland hub coming up, undoubtedly. I just am a little bit nervous about whether they'll just go through another... Because we, we just can't afford to drop too many more games. To make yeah. top four this year, you probably need to only lose five or six games. Yeah. So, or that's certainly top two. And that's that's with a full season. So, yeah, I just think we can't really afford too much of a form slump because of how poorly we started. Yeah. But we, we it might not happen. So, I'm going to say third or fourth. Um, the premiership favourite. Did you say... Who did you say before? I gave it slight edge to West Coast. Okay. I'm going to say Brisbane and Richmond are my two. Fair enough. And West Coast are the next outsider. I just think Richmond will come good at the right time. They've just they're such a proven, experienced side. Yes, they've played shit at times, but they've also done that in their premiership seasons. Still, like yeah, I'd still the team I'd least like to play in a grand final. I I think there's a bit more to Richmond. Though. I think they have dropped off to where they were previous years. They're still a very good team, but they're not mm. the team they were in 2017 or. Even 2019. Yeah, but we did think that middle of last year as well, they were sitting ninth or something. Yeah. So I just think they're so good at time in their run. I'm still wary of them as the, the best team. And Brisbane, because of the... Uh, I mean, let's let's face it, Brisbane just slaughtered West Coast earlier yeah. this year. So they, they deserve to be rated highly and they're going to be playing at home a lot or in Queensland, limited travel, potentially finals in Queensland. I could see Brisbane beating Richmond in the grand final and then maybe West Coast is... And then Geelong as the outsiders or something like that. Mm. So that's that's where I see it. Fair call. Um, all right. So we got about five questions left. Uh, HK Pig says, "Do you think the players are being overworked with the new fixture? And which clubs do you think benefit from a fixture like this?" And then Javka comes in and says, "Which teams will struggle with the close time frame between gaps coming up?" So let's let's break it down. Are the players being overworked? Who benefits and who doesn't benefit? I'd say. The ha all the the amount of hamstring injuries and those sort of like jointy well not jointy necessarily like those like muscle sort of strain injuries yeah soft tissue exactly those yep. sort of injuries are clear evidence for considering that limited preseason opportunity they pretty much had to re get their bodies sharp in the footy mm. combined with the shorter time frame there is probably going to be a few more soft tissue injuries this year yeah I mean there's no doubt the players yeah. are being overworked yeah. in terms of what they're used to yeah. But that's what we needed for a season to go ahead yeah. this year. And, and everyone's accepted that fact. Like, yeah. You've got to do what you've got to do. Yeah, and I think, like, I'm sure the players, most yeah. of them want a season to go ahead. Yeah. And, like, they're getting paid now. Yeah. Like, um, I don't know exactly how, what the deal is. I think they took, like, a 70% pay cut. It's probably renegotiated now. We're probably going to get a season in, hopefully. Yeah. Don't fuck it up, Victoria. 
Um, probably already too late. But um, yeah, long story short, look, yes, overworked in a sense, yeah. but that is just the necessity yeah. for the season to go ahead. And I do applaud the player's sacrifice um, for that, but um, but there's really no way around it. And in terms of players or teams that will struggle and succeed, I think you'll see the teams that have good injury lists going into this little period as well. So teams that have already got tested depth, um, uh, I'm not sure off the top of my head, but maybe someone like Collingwood has got a few players out. Um, they might struggle playing three... Well, they play like three games in nine days in three different states. Uh, so they, they play Perth today. Then yeah. they go to Queensland, I think, uh, in like, on like Wednesday or something like, silly like that. And then like six days after that or five days after that, they go and play Adelaide. So, oh, yeah. yeah, so th- that's... Uh, an, that, yeah, that, that's probably not... Still, Adelaide's better. pretty much a buy at this point. <laughs> yeah, I think it's Adelaide, not Port. But uh, yeah, it's probably Adelaide. Yeah. But... Yeah, so teams that, like that will be tested, but then you also have to think teams that have got the experienced big bodies um, at the top of their sort of game, like the mature lists, will succeed. So I'm thinking your Richmond's, Collingwood's, West Coast. And like West Coast is probably a team that will benefit yeah. from this in a sense. Uh, at the moment, they're all playing at home. Yeah. So it's a great timing for them. Uh, injury lists are looking pretty good and uh, experienced. So yeah, and someone like a Fremantle, by contrast, yes, they're at home. Injury list is woeful. It's young fucked. young players, so this is going to be a little tough period for them and Adelaide, yeah. guys yeah. like that. So, um, yeah, this is going to be a true test of resilience, sort of what you were alluding to earlier. The team that comes out of this the best could set them up really well for the year. Certainly. Um, this question is about Gold Coast. So, Larry says, since bringing in King, Rankin, Lukosius, Rowell and Anderson... Added to guys like Collins, Greenwood, and Ellis, so the mature players, yeah. and you got guys like Ballard and Bowes who are already on the list. Um, basically, do you think Gold Coast are finally putting their team together, a team that could be a finals contender soon? Yeah, certainly. They've definitely turned it around up there. Like two years ago, everyone was shitting on them, getting hoping to get rid of them. Now there's definitely that optimism that they can actually do something. They've got the talent in. They all seem to get around do in the club. Mm. So, do do still we do. <laughs> Yeah, I I agree. That I'm yeah. I'm impressed with Gold Coast the extent to which they've improved so quickly. Um, I did, I think it was something we were kind of hinting last year. I remember talking about Lukosius, excuse me, Rankin, Raul, Anderson, and King. I was like, oh, you can yeah. see these guys becoming guns, and maybe yeah. you could say that when Gold Coast started and they had Josh Toy, Daniel Gorringe, all these guys. <laughs> I understand that, but now you can you can see the talent. Was, there was a period there where they were bottom of the ladder and you were like, I don't know who the next best player is. Uh, is it Will Brody? He's on the outer at the moment. A few um, guys on the outer of it mm, didn't look too bad from last year. Yeah, yeah, true. Um, I mean, what's his, Fiorini is who I was trying to yeah, say. Yeah, okay, Fiorini. so Fiorini yeah. was like carrying their midfield for a while. Um, he's uh, on the outer. Um, might go home to Victoria, who knows? Uh, Could see a team picking him up. Um, but... Yeah, they've probably impressed me with how quick they've put it together. I do worry about maybe during this little period where they're going to be tested. We saw what happened last year when they got tired. They lost 19 games in a row. Made them look a lot worse than they were maybe. And this year is going to be a real challenge for them. Although they probably don't have to travel too much. Uh, so there is that benefit. A uh, um, couple of years, once those guys get the runs on the board, they'll be pretty yeah. happy. Yeah, Should we? do you reckon two years until finals? Yeah, I think that's a good estimate. I think next year will still be tough. There's a lot of good teams yeah. still better than them. But, um, and yeah, like Rankin and Raul and stuff, like they're sick now, but it doesn't mean they're going to be that much better in uh, year two and then year three. Like it's going gonna, it's gonna to yeah. be not... It's not linear. incremental. It's sort of... Yep. Sh- yeah. Exactly. Um, Bruce, friend of the channel. Actually, all these guys are friend of the channel. Yep. Thank you. Absolutely. There's a lot of the familiar names. Um, Bruce says, who's your favourite 22 and under player from your club and why? And who will be your next club captain? I've got one for both West Coast and Frio. I reckon we're going to have... I reckon there's a chance we both have the same answer for both, but you go first. I've gone Frio, Andy Brayshaw, I'd sort of say. Like, he's yep. got those intangibles, like the... Yep. Especially for that captain question specifically, he's got, like, those sort of attributes. Like, he's well presented. Mm. He's, the guys like him. Good guy. Yeah. Can carry it out in the field as well, though. Especially like his last five, six weeks, he's really shown starting to get that consistency in his game. Yep, I think you know. I have the exact same answer, and I knew that would happen. Yep. Brayshaw. I was saying this in the, when we went to see Freo Geelong together. You could yep. see he was just so much stronger over the ball. So there's so, like certain players of the Eagles, and I say the Eagles because they're just the closest example. Yep. But when you actually see them live, you can see some of them just don't get taken down. So someone like Shuey, um, 
when he gets tackled, yes, sometimes he gets caught on the ball, but a lot of the time he actually shrugs him off and at least gets a handball off. And Brayshaw is starting to do that for the first yeah. time. And you can see that he's putting together like 20 plus possession games. Um, he's, he's tracking along very nicely. And like you said, the, the off-field stuff, the intangibles, probably the next captain as well. Yeah. Do you have one for the Eagles? Ooh, under 22. Uh, that's the thing. I don't, it's tough pegging who's... Actually, Oscar Allen's yeah, under Yeah, that was exactly yeah, Oscar why. Allen, yeah, <laughs> Oscar Allen's under 22. Yep, I love Oscar Allen. So the only thing stopping Allen being a captain will be the timing of when this all changes. So Shuey's probably got two years left max. He's 30. Um, so, so if he hands it over in two years, Oscar Allen's probably a bit young at 22, 23, I'm thinking. Um, so then you're looking at someone like Liam Duggan, who I think is the next... Um, He's the next expected captain. So he, when the AFLX happened and we took a young team, they actually sent over Duggan as the captain a couple of years ago. Um, and I think he's just sort of being groomed for that role. It's a tough one because he's nowhere near as good a player as Oscar Allen. And Oscar Allen, I think, will be the the best player for the next wave of Eagles. Yeah. So after your Tim Kelly's, Elliot Yo's, and all that. But I a captain think, doesn't have to be your best player, though. You're right. But my, my point is he will. I can't see him ever being dropped. Whereas Duggan, I can't... I, maybe you could say this about Hearn back in the day because Hearn wasn't that flash like five years ago. But Duggan, I can't see being a lock for best 22 his whole career. Okay. And so, I, think, yeah. I think that's that, an issue that with him. It's definitely an issue, yeah. But maybe I'm wrong. He's actually playing good football this year. He's a lock for 22 right now. Yeah. But I'm just not as convinced. Whereas Oscar Allen, I'm like, who do you think's coming everywhere. for him? Sort of thing. What, like your Tom, some combo of like Tom Coles, yeah. those sort of dudes? Well, actually, it's a fair point. Probably. Probably not so much anyone at the moment. We probably do yeah. need some depth in that halfback role. You've got Nelson and Cole already in the team. Yeah. Francis Watson just did an ACL, probably not going to play a game of footy again. Shepard um, and Hearn aren't going to be pressing forever. Yeah, so Hearn in particular has probably only got a couple of years left. So may- maybe I'm wrong on that. Maybe yeah. I'm wrong on that. Um, but I think Oscar Allen is a, a super talent for us. Well, probably the best kid we've drafted in a long, long time. Yeah. Yeah, I wanted him. Yeah. <laughs> Next question is Dom again wants to know: Will you ever do a goal kicking challenge with you, Busher, and Joycey? Have you seen videos like that? Yeah, yeah, play yeah. Off, yeah. I'm, I'm up for one. Yeah, I'll kick a few sausage rolls. I reckon there's a chance I have not kicked a footy since 2015. Yeah, I haven't touched. I think there's a significant yeah. chance. That's the fact. I don't actually know. I might start playing with Dylan. Dylan, my roommate, yeah. former East Fremantle player, very, very good. Yep. Might get him to. Um, I'll might. buy a footy and maybe we'll go for a kick. Uh, in, to, in order to practice for these videos yeah. I think I think it's like um, on the cards like I was, I was doing a podcast with Joe and Dylan yesterday I was a guest on the podcast because they did a kick to kick thing with Jersey didn't they yeah, yeah. and they said um, we, we might do one with them two versus me and Jersey or something yeah. like that so yeah it's, it's inevitable I can't get away from it so I'm going to have to start practicing yeah, my- um, but yeah no, I, I'm into it but apparently they're really horrible to edit oh yeah they would be a bus so, I reckon. yeah because you need multiple cameras and the timing yeah. Oh, the timing would be horrendous because you can't the audio the cameras would be on separate parts of the field yeah. so you can't like match up the audio that's horrible oh yeah <laughs> like, <laughs> nah but if somebody else edits I'll take part yeah, <laughs> yeah. Jarkin or Jarkin Jarkin wants to know who is your favourite Spice Girl oh I don't really know too much about the Spice Girls but I suppose I'll go with who's Dave Posh or whatever she's the one Dave yeah. Beckham's pumping ain't she yeah oh he's yeah. probably pumped multiple mate yeah, <laughs> Even, Mel, was Mel B a Spice Girl? The yeah, one I think yeah. so. Yeah, she's all right. Uh, Jerry Halliwell. Um, oh. Then there's the blonde one. I th- oh, what was her name? Victoria? Is that no, no, no. There's another. There's two others. Shit, I don't know. Uh, this was my sister's yeah. era. They're our older sisters. Yeah. You're even younger than me, so yeah, Chaz, I- you know. And, um, yeah, I always. I think. I think when I was a kid, I did fancy Victoria Beckham. Yeah. I think that's the case. Um, who's your favourite One Directioner? Oh. Lucky Neil. Yeah, true. <laughs> yeah, I'm a real Harry Styles man. No, not really. I actually am digging his new stuff. I haven't heard any. Like, I used to previously any dismiss individual it. stuff. He yeah. used to be like, nah, this is for losers, mate. <laughs> but now I'm just like, his latest album, um, don't mind it. But Niall Horan's actually got one good song that I like. I haven't heard any of their individual stuff. Yeah. The last time I heard of them was What Wakes You Beautiful. What oh. makes you beautiful? Wow, yeah, you do live a, under a rock. I do. <laughs> Especially with music, hey. I'm so yeah. weird with music. Um, Zayn Malik, I don't rate his music. He seems like a weirdo as well. Yeah. This is getting all far, far bit from this far. The content of this podcast. All right, final question. Farmer Toby with probably the most poignant question of the day. How many wheat beaks do you do a day? 36, counted them myself. <laughs> you love that Harry Potter reference. I do, it's one of my As favorites. do I. It gets me every time. I, I, probably, I could probably do about... I don't do them too often, but I could probably do about... Six to eight, I guess. I don't know. I am the Senate. <laughs> That's another one that gets me. Uh... 
Not uh, yet. I, I, ne- <laughs> I never really had too much wheat bix. Hey? Yeah, I've never been a fiend. I was more of a Nutrigrain man. Oh, man. Yeah. Iron man. Yeah. Doing those triathlons. True. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I'm not really a cereal kind of bloke. Yeah, I'm not a breakfasty generally yeah. kind of guy. I went through a uh, cornflakes phase. That was exciting. Yeah, I, li- I like cornflakes. I like the cereals. Yeah. I like. I just don't eat breakfast that much, really. True. Yeah, I'm much. Oh yeah, I'll um, I'll never go to work with food in my guts. Uh. <laughs> I don't know why I phrased it like that, <laughs> but I'll uh, I'll never eat before work, no matter what time, uh, unless it's like one o'clock. Sometimes I start yeah. at one, but if I start at nine, I won't eat before. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. Well. Uh, that's we've come to a meandering end of uh, True yeah. Footy Podcast 57. I thought it was pretty good. Bloody good. We covered buddy, yeah. a lot of variety of different topics. Yeah. Um, remember what we said about uh, reaching out to us. If anyone wants to reach out, hope, uh, hope we can uh, so help Beyond Blue. Any of those yeah. results. Someone been, more qualified, yeah, exactly. perhaps, if you've got real issues. But uh, yep. we're always here um, to take a uh, massive deviation. If you need your ball shaves um, <laughs> and you need a good quality product, check out manscaped.com. If you were interested in buying that sort of thing, we're not asking anyone to go buy something just to support us, but uh, it would actually help the channel going forward, um, help us improve you know, what we already do yep. and try and um, maybe allow us a bit more time to do it as well. So yeah. Certainly. Bush, this has been Swell. Absolutely. Um, we'll catch up another... We'll do another podcast soon. I'm thinking maybe last year we did the mid-season like grading we teams. could probably yeah we could do like a single topic related pod like yeah. something like that like yeah a, i like those as well yeah. so like yeah. a, where we just break jump into the topic talk about 40 mm. minutes or whatever how yeah. long it takes yeah that'd be hot cool and and we'll keep the discord questions coming yeah. as well so yeah cool thank you everyone thanks for your contributions and we will see you in the next one see you soon cheers <laughs>